And also on the foreign scene, the campaign team for Democratic White House candidate Joe Biden has issued a scathing response after U.S. President Donald Trump amplified a conspiracy theory about his running mate. Mr. Trump said he had heard that Kamala Harris, a U.S.-born citizen whose parents were immigrants, doesn't qualify to serve as U.S. Vice President. This is not true. Ms. Harris is eligible to run for president or vice president. The Biden campaign called the comments abhorrent and pathetic. They noted that Mr. Trump spent years promoting a, for, a false Bertha uh, theory that ex-president Barack Obama was not born in the U.S. Ms. Harris, a senator from California on Tuesday, became the first black woman and the first Asian American to be named as a running mate on a main party U.S. presidential ticket. And joining us live from the U.S. is lawyer Olu Osha. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you so much for having me. The election campaigns are gathering momentum. Would you say that Joe Biden naming, of course, uh, Kamala Harris as his vice president pick is a major game changer? Um, well, yes, it certainly is. Um, I think um, Donald Trump is really Joe Biden with, with any of the uh, vice presidential picks that he had on his uh, list. Uh, would have defeated uh, Donald Trump anyway, because uh, Donald Trump is disastrous, he's imploding, and Joe Biden right now just has to do no harm, do no wrong, and, uh, and let Donald Trump just continue to uh, destroy himself. Um, uh, but in picking Kamala Harris, she checks all the uh, boxes. Uh, she's the best choice. Uh, she's excellent. Americans like to see um, a future commander in chief or somebody who can actually uh, take the job in 24 hours uh, in selection of, the, of, of a vice president. And last year, um, while she got on the campaign trail, Americans were actually convinced. Uh, she's also supremely competent. Uh, she's a fighter. She's relentless. Uh, we've seen her record. Uh, she was attorney general of the state of California. It's America's largest state with over 40 million people. She had well, over a staff of over 5,000 uh, attorneys under her as attorney general. That's a big deal job. The gross GDP of uh, California actually uh, is $3.2 trillion, and that's uh, bigger than the GDP of uh, the United Kingdom and, and France. Uh, so she has ample experience, and she's been a senator since 2016. All right. She's been dogged. Americans have actually seen that she's relentless. Uh, so apart from what people have called the optics, that's, uh, of course, her being uh, the first uh, black woman uh, and also she will be the first Asian uh, American. Uh, and I was just going to bring that up. First you know, woman president, is is that going to be a challenge? Well. She's competent. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. You know, the, the background of being Asian and, of course, you know, African. Um, how, how, you know, does that play out? Is that going to be something that works in her favor? Um, well, it works a lot in, in both ways, in Joe Biden's favor as well. We saw the campaign and she was his most vociferous critic. Uh, she was the one who seemed to do him the most damage when she talked about the issue of bossing. But um, we see the temper of the United States now since the killing of George Floyd on uh, uh, May 25th. Uh, Anti-racism has been the theme. The protests have not uh, relented. They're still going on till today. And of course, we have the pandemic. Black and brown people are the most adversely impacted people. Um, and it speaks to the structural racism that's uh, currently in America. And so these are issues. And it shows that uh, uh, Joe Biden is not tone deaf, unlike Donald Trump. Uh, he is sensitized by what's going on. And he was shrewd. And he's able to put a grudge aside. And uh, he's thinking about the nation, what's best for the nation. And so. Uh, it, you know, he, she checks all the, all, all the boxes and um, okay. everyone's excited about her. All right. I, I also want to um, um, speak about why, you know, you feel Donald Trump has been so hard to shake, despite the fact that he's been dogged by so much controversy. Well, I wouldn't say that he's been hard to shake. Um, America has never, America is a democracy. Uh, we vote in a a president every four years. Uh, the numbers actually show that um, uh, his job ratings are, are terrible. His approval ratings are terrible. They're down. And uh, Joe Biden is beating the him who is uh, Donald Trump, who's the incumbent, who's leading him by about 11 points. Uh, at this point, any of the Democratic uh, 
uh, can candidates in the primaries would have defeated uh, Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump, remember, he came, he won uh, through the Electoral College, and um, he lost the popular vote by as many as much as three million votes to um, Hillary Clinton, uh, despite you know the apathy. So um, we have four years to replace our, our you know our president when we make a mistake, which is what's happened with Donald Trump. And we're going to get uh, that opportunity to remove him uh, in November. And the writing is on the wall that he's uh, going to be out of the door. You sound very optimistic. Let, let, I also I want to talk about his policy for eliminating payroll tax. It looks set to be his counter-offensive move. Do you think this will be effective? Well, um, let me just say that that is actually, a, it would be a reckless uh, thing for him to do to remove the payroll taxes. And he's, by the way, his chief press secretary has since walked that uh, back and suggested that the president misspoke. Because uh, payroll taxes, um, they, uh, they fund 12, you know, 12.4% 12 of U.S. payroll taxes actually fund uh, Social Security, uh, which provides uh, payments to 65 million Americans. So, and it prevents poverty. So um, if he were to eliminate payroll taxes, um, he's going to actually be removing $1.24 trillion uh, from the GDP annually, and he'll be putting a, 10, a $16 trillion hole in the U.S. budget uh, over a 10-year period. And he has not uh, provided a, a reasonable way to actually replace the payroll taxes uh, should he do that. So it's a very disastrous idea. And... Um, you know, he, he mentioned manufacturing. He said he was going to replace it with manufacturing, but those are part of the wishful thinking and the lies uh, of John, Donald Trump, uh, because um, you know manufacturing has since since the time uh, Donald Trump took uh, office uh, and till today, uh, two hundred and fifty-seven thousand uh, manufacturing jobs. Uh, you know, it, it, we 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 had less than 257,000 uh, 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 less uh, manufacturing jobs. So uh, anyway, since COVID-19, since the pandemic, 740,000 manufacturing jobs have been lost. And uh, so we see manufacturing is on the decline. Right. It's doing very, very poorly. Uh, the economy is very is a huge part. 16 million Americans are unemployed right now, and that's okay. not going to help well. All right. Um, um, lastly, I want to know what you think um, Joe Biden and, of course, Kamala Harris would need to do to um, pull in more of Donald Trump's fan base. Um, it, it is expected that, you know, they already have, you know, black America. They already have, um, of course, um, um, you know, all, other, you know, Latinos and, and the rest, you know. But how can they bring in more of Donald Trump's fan base their way? Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, the polls already indicate that um, the Biden-Harris ticket is leading by 11%. So right now, uh, the thing is to do no, harm, no wrong. Um, you can never win all the, all the votes, right, in America. Everybody's got what is entitled to his opinion and his, and his votes. Um, I would say that Trump's platform, it seems to me, uh, since he promoted the birtherism since Barack Obama as candidacy, and he used racism and misogyny as as his, as his platform. Um, you know, they 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 are probably an unshakable, uh, intractable uh, base. But um, you know, I'd say competence. Uh, many Americans, they said, fifty three percent of the electorate actually is excited by the uh, pick of Kamala Harris already, and um, her record speaks to itself. And um, she just has to be able to show that tough skin. And uh, she's a good campaigner. She has great experience campaigning. So you have to get on the campaign trail and they have to talk about competence. They have to solve uh, America's problems. You have a problem with the economy. They have to speak to that. They have to, that those are the bread and butter, butter issue. And they have to also talk about uh, dealing with uh, racism. Uh, America is a diverse country. Um, the uh, motto of America is uh, e pluribus unum. That's out of many, you're one. And so, uh, they have to show that, unlike Donald Trump, they're going to unite the country again. So, uh, well, Oasha, thank you so much for sharing with us. And, uh, of course, we'd love to speak with you again, maybe during the elections and, you know, after that.
Thanks once again. Thank you so much for having me.